Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name is Jane Owen and I'd like to introduce you um, on this live session, um, Mr. Stephen Jones, and he's going to talk to you about electricity revision. Hello, everybody. Um, today I'm going to go through Unit 2.3, DC circuits, and if you've got time at the end, I'll go back to 2.1, but I'm trying to focus on 2.3. 2.3 being the culmination of, of all of it, really. So before we start, we need to look at what tools we need for 2.3. So the equations I'm going to be looking at are P equals IV, that's one of them. Uh, P equals V squared over R, second one. Uh, R equals I over V, right? or V equals I R, depending how you want to, um, sorry, that's wrong. V over I, my apologies, guys. Let me rub that out. R equals V over I. Well done if you spotted that mistake. E equals I, open brackets, R plus R. And I'm going to equate that to Y equals MX plus C. All right, so those are the first lot. And then I'm going to look at V out equals uh, some resistance from uh, one R resistor over the R total times the V in. So I'm going to look at that one as well. I'm going to look at resistors in series. So R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R to the N and also in parallel. So one over RT equals one over R to the one plus one over R to the two plus one over R to the N. And uh, from previous units, I'm looking at I equals Q over T. And uh, if you didn't know, uh, voltage equals energy over charge. So those are the equations I'm going to re refer to throughout this um, live session. All right, let's start off with Kirchhoff's laws. Now, Kirchhoff's laws are the bedrock of 2.3, and without them, you will not really uh, understand or be able to tackle most of the questions. And they are, in, they are really straightforward, and that in itself is not a problem. It's just that many students forget, forget to apply them. So Kirchhoff's first law, really straightforward, all right, it is uh, that the current going into a junction is the same as the current leaving a junction, right? So, for example, if I've got six six amps going in, or 16 amps, have I just written in there, and eight amps goes that way, then eight amps must go that way. So what's leaving the junction must be what's going into the junction. And similarly, if I'm going the other way, right, like so, and I've got four amps there and three amps there, then this must equal seven amps. So essentially, um, what we're saying is the current going in must be the same as the current going out of the junction, whether it's going in that way or in that way. Now, this is a consequence of conservation of charge, right? So the law for here is a conservation of charge law. Right? I.e., charge is not created, destroyed, it doesn't pile up in corners, all right? It doesn't pile up anywhere. So it's the conservation of charge law. So that's Kirchhoff's first law, and I refer referring to that quite a lot throughout this uh, session. Now the second law, right, is so that was about current. The second law is about voltage. So what we've got is we put a, a cell or a battery, say for example, 12 volts in there, and we put a couple of resistors in. Let's see how many resistors I can squeeze in there. Didn't leave myself much room, did I? I get three in there. There you go, I got three in there. So these 12 volts around a closed loop, this 12 volt supply battery, we call it the EMF, has got to be uh, equi equivalent to the potential difference between the terminals. So if this was four volts, that was three volts, then it must add up to 12 volts. So three and four is seven, so that must be five volts there. So Kirchhoff's second law is in any loop or path in a circuit, the sum of all EMFs, so it might be one or two batteries in there, doesn't matter where they are, they could be elsewhere in there as well. The sum of the EMFs equals the sum of the potential differences across all the components in that circuit. All right, and that is a conservation of charge. Why is it conservation of charge? And why is that a conservation, uh, sorry, co not conservation of charge, conservation of energy. My apologies again. Starting off well, you're all right. All right, so if we look at the first one, current is Q over T, it's the conservation of charge. And if you look at the second one with voltage, it's the conservation of energy. All right. So those are Kirchhoff's first and second law. I'm going to 
review, refer to this as Kirchhoff's first law, and I refer to that one as Kirchhoff's second law. So if I refer to the first and second law, this is what I'm referring to. And if we remember that all the way through, we will go, we won't go far along. All right, so first important bit. Second important bit, which you've probably practiced and you probably understand, but I'm just going to go through anyway, right, is calculating resistors in series and parallel. So this is straightforward. I'm not going to go too much into this. So for in series, right, uh, RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R to the N. And what that looks like is we just in series. So we're like this. This will be R1, R2, R to the N, whatever that is. Right? And it just means that the total resistance is going to be the sum of all those three. Makes sense. Now, in parallel, it's a little bit more tricky in the sense that we have to use 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, 2 plus 1 over R to the N. And that is because as we do this, as we put more resistors in parallel, the actual resistance in that in those parallel components actually decreases. So if I was to join them up, there we go, not very well joined, but that's, that'll be all right. So as I add more resistors, there's more paths for the current to flow through and therefore the overall resistance goes down. And hence why we've got this one over RT, because one over R1, one over R2, plus one over R, whatever we've got. All right, so those, those are um, some important uh, recall facts that for you. Now, the first thing I'm really going to visit on is internal resistance and terminal PD. Now, you may have done this, you may not have done this. Now, it's very hard for me to explain it to you on paper, but I'll do my very best. Say, for example, we have a cell and connect to that cell, we've got a single lamp. All right. Now, we can measure the current through that. We can measure the resistance through that, and that's all well and good. All right. And if this was, say, I don't know, let's put 1.5 volts through there. All right. Now, through Kirchhoff's second law, all right, if you remember it, the EMFs must equal the PDs in any closed loop, then this should have, if I put a voltmeter across that, should have 1.5 volts. And we can measure it, and it'd probably be close to, if not 1.5 volts. Now, if I add a second one to that, this is where it gets a bit interesting. First of all, we realize that they're in now in parallel. So the resistance in this parallel circuit has decreased. Now you think, hang on then, that means the current increases, the voltage remains the same. But if you were to do this for real, that would be true. Resistance has gone down and the current will increase. But you'll also notice that as soon as you connect this second lamp, right, it will go dimmer. The pair will go dimmer. Well, that's strange if they should be getting the same voltage, which is one and a half volts. And if you add a third one, and if you've got the equipment to do this at home, or when you go back um, into school and you try this, it's actually quite fascinating. So if I had a third one, again, the resistance decreases, but the current increases. So every time I add uh, a lamp, I increases, all right? Now this has an effect, you'd think, of making the bulbs brighter, but no, that's to do the voltage from here, and again, each one of these should have a closed loop, should have exactly the same voltage across them. But again, if I was to use all three lamps, it'd be dimmer again. And we can continue with this, all right? So two bulbs is dimmer than the, the one bulb, three bulbs is dimmer than two bulbs, which is dimmer than one bulb. Now, think about this for a second. Why is that happening if current is increasing? Well, if you realized there must be a reduced potential difference across here. All right, so if we put a voltmeter across there, all right, or across there, or across there, you realize that the voltage every time we add a lamp decreases. And that is because there's some lost volts in the circuit. Now, where are those lost volts? In here, I hear you say. All right. So we've got lost volts in there. And the only way we can have lost volts in there, if you remember the equation V equals IR, right? The only way we can have lost volts in there if there is some sort of resistance in the lamp. And we call this internal resistance. Oh, sorry, not of the lamp, of the lamp, of the cell. And we give it the small letter R. 
All right. So in reality, what we do is we draw uh, a cell like so. So we put in a resistor, we put in our battery, we put the terminals either side and we put it in a box. And that's to show a real battery. All right. All right. Uh, hopefully you understand that. So where does the formula come from? Right, I've mentioned at the very top there. It's right at the very top here somewhere. It'll allow me to just go back up. Excuse me a second. All right, and we need to go back a bit further. So where's the formula? There it is. So where do we get that from? You don't need to derive this. I think it's just uh, interesting if you like. So if we look at the EMF, or the, the voltage, we can doesn't matter where we start from really. So if you look at the voltage available in the circuit, it's equal to this EMF, which is supplied by the battery, minus these so-called lost volts. All right, I'm gonna put in inverted commas because they're not really lost at all, are they? All right, now if I rearrange that, which would be a bit easier for us to understand, EMF equals voltage in the circuit plus these lost volts. All right, let's, let's put that into numbers now. Well, we know EMF, we can stay as it is, all right? And we know that voltage in a circuit due to Ohm's law is IR, plus lost faults. If you remember, I've just shown you up here, right? Is I times now little r, all right? Because it's internal resistance. We end up with this little equation, which simplifies to EMF equals uh, I, open brackets, R plus R. And that's where the equation comes from. Uh, so very, very simple on that one. Now then, how does that relate to uh, Y equals MX plus C? I'll do that in a bit. Right, so measuring the EMF of the cell, if we go back, right, how do you measure the EMF of a cell? How do you measure it? Right, because as soon as you've got current flowing through the circuit, you've got lost volts, right? You've got internal resistance, therefore you've got power loss in the battery. The battery will get hot. So how do you measure it? Well, I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. Well, if you've got it, well done. You simply measure the voltage without a load. In other words, you don't connect anything to it, just a voltmeter. All right, so basically you want current not to flow so you don't want any current flowing and how do you do that well to do that you've got to have a high resistance voltmeter all right so it's got to be high resistance if it's not high resistance then you're gonna have current flowing if you've got current flowing you're gonna have power loss in the battery all right so you need to do that and you need to do it briefly all right, so don't go for too long because you will drain the cell out. All right, so the power drain of the cell will happen a lot quicker. All right, so let's have a look now the next bit. So relating V equals IR, all right, which I've done there to Y equals MX plus C. Now this is uh, quite a difficult one to do. So what you're gonna do, if you do a practical on this, all right, the aim is to get all our equations into the form Y equals MX plus C. But the equation we've got is V equals I, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, V equals E minus I R. Doesn't matter which way around it, you can do it the other way around. Doesn't matter. What you're going to look at is, uh, let's try, let's write another way. Let's write EMF equals I, open brackets, R plus R. It's probably easier from that way. You can do it from either way, it doesn't matter. The first thing you'll realize is, what can I control? What can I change? And what can I measure? Well, what you want on the X axis is the thing that you change. So the thing that you can change is the resistance. So if you change the resistance in the circuit, this bit here, all right? So that needs to go to your x-axis. But that means then this bit here needs to go to your y-axis, all right? Because that's what you can measure. Can't really measure EMF, can't really measure R, might wanna find it out, but those are the two easiest things to control. So what you need to do is rearrange this equation for y equals mx plus c. Well, to do that, you need to get y onto the other side, right? And EMF onto the other side. So let's have a look over here. Let's just quickly, where's my pen gone? Uh, where's my pen gone? There it is, there, yeah, 
So let's have a look. So we've got, let's get I over the other side. So we've got one over I equals E and epsilon up here. So I take it down the other side and I've got R plus R over the EMF. All right, so all I've done is I've taken EMF from that side to that side and I from this side to that side. So I've got one over I there. Now I need to simplify this a little bit, which I can do because one over I equals R over EMF plus little r over EMF. All right, and if I take that over to here, uh, I've lost my pen a little bit. Where's it gone? Where am I writing? There I go. All right, so I take that over to here, where it's got one over I equals R over EMF plus R over EMF. And what I've got is this. I can plot the Y or the axis as one over Y. I can plot the X axis as one over, as R, sorry. And then uh, I've got my gradient as one over, so I'm gonna keep the divide sign in there, one over M. And then our plus C is R over EMF. And that's how you then um, get e, V equals E minus I R, or in our case, EMF, E equals I R plus R into an equation. And you can plot that, right? And say the gradient will be one over EMF, so you can work out the EMF of the battery. And then you can calculate R from the intercept with the Y axis. So the intercept would be R over EMF, or R equals intercept times EMF. All right, so there's the theory. Let's have a look at some practice. Let's change that back there. So what we got here are some very straightforward questions. Well, they should be straightforward, we'll see. Right, a voltmeter is connected across the terminals of a cell and reads 2.4 volts. An ammeter whose resistance is zero, important because if it, um, if it wasn't zero, then it would reduce the current. Uh, and it reads six amps when connected briefly across the cell. Write down the EMF for the cell. Well, in this case, the voltmeter connected across the terminals of a cell reads 2.4 volts. So it is actually as straightforward as 2.4 volts. No load on it. There it is, no load on it. So that is EMF. Remember to do it briefly, all right? Otherwise, you will uh, drain the cell quickly or overheat it. So calculate the internal resistance of the cell. Well, for that, we need our equation, which we've been using, and that is EMF equals I R plus R. Now you can do it different ways, right? It's not a problem, right? But in this case, right, if I was to uh, rewrite that like this, EMF equals V plus I R, right? Which is a better way to do it because this is zero. There's nothing in the circuit, right? So it leaves us with a very simple equation, which you've probably already realized. EMF equals I times little r. All right, um, and we want uh, internal resistance. Um, so R, yeah, I'm running out of paper, hang on. Here's my, there you go. R equals, what is R equal? Uh, EMF over I equals 2.4 over six, and that gives us 0.4. I'm gonna squeeze that in there. And it's ohms, there we go. So there's the answer, 0.4 ohms. Uh, give a reason for not leaving the ammeter connected to the cell. Well, there's two reasons. The cell will heat up or drains quickly. Now, it's going to drain anyway, right? But what you want is the bit at the end, the quickly, all right? So the, it drains really quickly, all right? So make sure you, you save that because otherwise you don't get a mark because it's going to drain. Uh, but the point is, if you just leave it, it's going to drain really quickly. Now then, they've added a two ohm resistor uh, to the cell. So calculate the current through um, this cell. It's worth two marks, so it's got to be multi-staged. Right. So again, really simple. This one, we're going to go back to our first principles, which is our equation. So EM, oh, EMF equals uh, I and r plus r right. and what we need then is rearrange it because we're looking for the current so i equals emf over r plus r i'll put them in brackets just to make it easy for you which equals well we know the emf is uh what was it two 
0.4. We've got more what it was then. Over um, 2 plus 0.4. So that's 2.0 plus 0.4. And if you get calculators out or your brain out, you realise that that is just simply 1 amp. All right. So you can see, very easy to use the equation in any which way form we need. All right, so far so good. Right, the next stage in this then, so those are the, the first bit. The last bit is about understanding potential dividers. Potential dividers, very, very useful circuits, very useful indeed, because they allow you to share or uh, pull off a voltage that's different to the supply. All right. So if you look at this very simple circuit here, using Kirchhoff's second law, all right, what is the output voltage across these terminals, assuming it's not a load? So if I put my meter across there, what would be the output voltage? Well done. If you said it was six volts, because they're identical, then V equals IR, is the same for both of them. So therefore, cross here would be six volts, must sum up to 12 volts, therefore uh, six volts and six volts is 12 volts. So that makes sense. Now, as a potential divider, that's useful, but it's probably a little bit better to use a potential divider with a variable resistor. It's a bit more useful because you can tweak this uh, top resistor here, which we had as 200 ohms up there, and we can tweak the bottom resistor. So we can change the values of the resistors to match our output. All right, so that's what we do. Now, understanding where this equation comes from. So I've broken it down into RA plus RB there. In the uh, data booklet, it's got RB over R total, but RA plus RB is the R total. So we'll see how where that comes from. Right, we have to start from Prince principles. All right, so firstly, finding the current. So we need to find I in the circuit. Well, from V equals IR, right, then I equals V in, right, because that's my circuit. There's nothing on here yet, so that's my circuit, over uh, the total resistance there, which is RA, our top half of it, if you like, plus RB, the bottom half of it. Or you could write that as R total. It doesn't really matter how you write that, All right? So I is that. So that's our first equation, if you like. And where do we go from there? Well, we want to find V out, all right? So let's do V out. So let's go that. So V out, all right? Simple um, Ohm's law equals I R, all right? In this case, V out is going to be R B because that's where we want it across R B because Kirchhoff's second law, all right? There's my closed loop, so that will be the same as that. So okay, but what is R? Well, if we substitute equation one in, which is I, then what we've got is V out equals, well, let's write it in, V in over RA plus RB times RB. And if I just simplify that for you, uh, V out equals RB over R total times V in. And that's where it comes from. Now, in reality, this is a very horrible equation. If you want to calculate V out, really straightforward. Everybody can do that. You're all intelligent people. You can do that. If you want to calculate V in, that's not a problem. We can put the numbers in, um, solve it, uh, calculate some calculations, solve it, and calculate V in. It's when you need to work out RB or RA that things tend to fall apart. So when you're looking at potential dividers, uh, worked examples or equations or problems, that's when we try not to use that. So what I've got here is here's a worked example. Let's try and avoid that as much as we can. Now, it may be an exam, they ask you to use that, and that's absolutely fine, right? But we will try and solve everything without that. And what I'm gonna try and do it with is I'm just gonna try and solve all the problems of potential dividers using this simple Ohm's law equation. That's what I'm going to try and do, right? And K1 plus K2, all right? So Kirchhoff's first law and Kirchhoff's second law. So I'm going to apply those laws with that to try and solve something as complex as this. 
and you'll see that just by applying the simple uh, those simple two laws and that how easy this ends up doing. Right, so let's have a look then. Um, in the circuit we've shown, the amateur's resistance and the battery's internal resistance are both negligible. That's telling you that this is uh, like a real battery. There's no internal resistance that we need to care about. That's great. So with a switch open, the amateur reads 0.4 amps. So I'm just going to do the lap on my diagram here. Right. right, OK, that's great. So calculate R1. Well, what we need to do for this is just understand that actually we only got the current through here, but the current, according to um, Kirchhoff's first law, is the same here and is the same here, is the same in the whole loop because this hasn't been closed yet. So the current through the whole of this closed loop is the same, and that's going to help us out no end. Because what we can do is, oh, hang on. So if we're going to do R1, right, R equals V over I, because I've said oh, I'm going to use that if I can help it, then I is 0.4, absolutely brilliant, so I got that. But what's the voltage? What is the voltage across that? So to do that, then I need to get find uh, the voltage across this, all right? So I'm going to go uh, V equals IR, right, around here, equals 0.4 times 1.5. And uh, what's that? Mm. Let's have a look, what is that? Uh, hang on. Well, I could do it a different way, but that doesn't matter. I'm just trying to think, how did I do it before? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you can do it another way. Let me show you a, a probably similar way, right? It works out the same way. I've got my math brain on to do that. So I can do it that way. All right, which gives me an answer for that. And then I take the voltage away from that. Or I could just simply go, which is what I've just, my brain just said, I can go use the same equation, V equals I R. I want to find out R, so R equals V over I. Let's take the whole voltage, 5.4 over 0 0.4. And I get, what do I get? What's that in my head? Um, 13 a bit, 13.5 um, ohms. So 13.5 ohms is across both. Well, I know looking at that, I got 1.5. So 13.5 minus 1.5 gives me 12 ohms. So I can do it that way, or I could have done it that way and then worked that out and still subtracted it. It would still give me um, the same answer and got the same answer there. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, All right, not a problem. Now the switch is now closed and the amateur now has dropped to 0 0.3 amps, which is expected uh, because we've got um, another resistor involved. So the current should be less, but less of it's going through here. All right, so that's to be expected. Calculate new PD between P and Q. Well, what do we know so far? We know that across this area here, is what was it uh what did i say it was uh oh i'm trying to calculate it so the new potential difference so v equals i r i know that the resistance is 12 i know that um the current through it is 0 0.3 so all i'm going to do is simple that so equals 0 0.3 times uh 12 equals and it should be 3.6 volts, okay? So that's straightforward. That's just using V equals IR again with the information that we've gathered, all right? So let's move on. Uh, it's got notices coming up, excuse me, guys. Now, why? explain why the new PD across the one half resistor at the top must be now be 1.8 volts. Well, that's Kirchhoff's second law, all right? And what he said was the potential difference in the circuit must be the same as EMF supplied by the cell. So if we've got, let me just scroll back up, if we've got 5.4 supplied by the cell, all right, so let's just write that. So we've got 5.4 volts, which is our EMF. We've also got 3.6 volts across, is it R2? Let's have a look. R2, is it R2 or just R1? R1. Therefore, the voltage for here and the voltage for the top resistor must equal 5.4. Right. So what we got is 5.4 and 
minus 3.6 equals 1.8 volts, which is what is available or the potential that is across this bit here. All right, so that would be that bit there. And that is answering that one. Calculate the current through the one and a half ohm resistor. Well, very, very simple for this, all right? Uh, they've given you the clue there. So again, I'm just gonna go I equals V over R, all right? And the voltage across that we were given just now is 1.8. We could have calculated, but we're not. And R was uh, 1.5. Uh, we must go there is 1.5. And if you do 1.8 divided by 1.5, you get 1.2 amps, all right? So let's have a look at our diagram. So this is now 0.3, and that is now 1.2 uh, through there. All right. So let's just make that amps here clear. So it's 0.3 amps, 1.2 amps. So 1.2 is there, and it branches off uh, there, Kirchhoff's second law. Right, let's go on there. Calculate R2, giving your reasoning. Right, so R2. So here it gets a little bit tricky. We need to use Kirchhoff's first and second laws for this. So if we want to get R, we need, right, using Ohm's law, R equals V over I. Right, so where's the voltage? Where's the current? That's what we've got to find out. So let's go back to our circuit. Well, we know the voltage across there is 3.6. Where's it gone? Where's my mouse gone? Uh, there we go. So we know the voltage across this section here or through here is 3.6. And Kirchhoff's second law says it must be 3.6 in here. So that must be 3.6 volts if I put a, a meter between there and there. All right. So that's OK. So what's the current then? Well, that's Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's first law, 1.2 amps gone to here. Whatever goes into the junction must be the same as it leaves. We know that's 0.3. So this bit here must be 0.9 amps. So what we got is 3.6 volts, 0.9 amps. And so if we go down to there, so we got, uh, what was it? 3.6 volts, 0.9 amps. How many nines go into 36? It's four, that's four ohms. Okay, and there we go. So there's a worked example for you, all right? So using it again. All right, so all I've used is E uh, V equals I R, uh, Ohm's law, to answer every question they've asked me for that. I've avoided using that as a potential divider equation. You will be chances that you will have to use that, and that's absolutely fine, but try and avoid it. Don't get bogged down with using it. So here's a different version of it, but essentially um, it's a similar type of thing, all right? So let's have a look, all right? Here we've got a uh, 12 volt, 24 watt filament lamp. All right, there it is. All right, so clear in the diagram the correct position of the voltmeter and ammeter. All right, you sh now you'd be surprised how many people do get this wrong, all right? Because where are you going to put it in the circuit? You could put it across R, you could put it across the 18, all right? But it wants you to do uh, the correct position for voltmeter and ammeter for the lamp, all right? So essentially it's going to go, uh, the voltmeter is going to cross there, and the ammeter is going to go in any of those bits there. So if you said that or thought that, you were spot on. I'm not going to draw them in, it'll cut to the diagram. Right, so when the, the lamp is working normally, calculate the current flowing through it. And this is my equation, P equals IV. Rearrange I equals P over V, right? And we've got 24 over 12. Don't need a calculator for that. That's two amps, all right? So that was straightforward. You can see why it was a one mark question. That's not uh, too difficult. Now here you have two options. This is why physics is great. You could use um, V equals IR again. Right, and rearrange that for R equals V over I, right? Or you can use um, P equals V squared over R. Doesn't matter which one. Now, reality, you should use that one just in case this one is wrong. But WJC being nice, uh, if you get that wrong, is there a carriage forward? So it makes no difference at all. I'm gonna use this one because it's probably a little bit easier on my brain. So I want R is V over I, which is 12 over two which is six ohms, okay? Either way, it would have worked out at six ohms. So again, simple mark question, that's why it's only worth one mark. Right, okay. So the value of R is shown that the voltage across the lamp can be varied between 0 and 12 volts. 
The circuit below shows the position of the movable contact when the amp lamp is normally uh, working at 12 volts. Now, this looks complicated, but actually it is. If we leave it there, because if we go to the other side, then we get no volts across it at all. So let's leave it there. Calculate the value of required R. So we have four marks, which means it's multi, multi, multi stage. And we need to use again the first plus second laws to solve this. All right. So the first law, right? Well, what we're going to do is calculate the value of R. So what do we know? Well, let's put in what we know already. All right. Let me just put down what we know. We know that. What do we know? Let's just scroll back up. Oh, where's my? Let's go. We know that uh, across that there is two amps, right? And also it's six ohms. So I'm just going to annotate my two amps there and six ohms. So let's work on this one first, because if I can work out this one, then I can work out that one, because I need to know what is I. So the question is, is what is I? All right. Well, I equals V over R. All right. So if we look at the I over the 18 first, because those the, that's the information we know, all right? And we'll say is V over R. Well, the voltage we know is 12 volts. That's really simple. And we know the resistance is 18. All right. Don't get confused with this resistance. We are looking at this one here. So 12 over 18 is, well, 0.667 recurring, 0.66. I'll put 0.667 amps. All right. So that's recurring. So now we know we've got 0.667 amps going down through here. All right. We also know, according to that, there's two amps going this way. So there's two amps going through this path, right, and 0.667 going through this path, which means the current going through here is 2.667 Kirchhoff's first law. All right. Now we know that, right? So if we've got that, then we want R. R is V over I. So R equals V over I, which is all right. We know I is 2.667. So what is the voltage? Well, according to this, this is 12 volts, all right? Kirchhoff's second law, all right? So if that's 12 volts between there and there, then between here and here should add up to 16, all right? Well, 16 minus 12. So across this part here, if I put a meter between there and there, it would equal four volts, all right? So let's put four volts in there. So four divided by 2.667 gives me, I I think it's 1.499 or approximately 1.5 ohms. Okay. And there we go, guys. All right. So that is a very quick overview and brief summary of the key parts of uh, 2.3. All right. So in 2.3, I've discussed very briefly resistors in parallel series. I've not gone through them because they're just application of mathematics. All right. I've gone through internal resistance and terminal PD and explained why bulbs go dimmer because it's these lost volts and come up with the equation. I've then uh, shown you how to uh, equate that to Y is MX plus C, which is really, really important. So you need to be able to do that, right? Not just for this one, but for your physics in general. And then I've gone through a, a, a practice question um, or a worked example of that. And then I've gone through potential dividers. And that is it. I will uh, give you some further questions uh, in the package. So if you want to have a go, there's some extra questions there if you so wish. OK, thank you, um, Steve Jones, on revising all of electricity. Um, that was very comprehensive and um, I hope that you can provide the answers for the last couple of bits if they do attempt them on their own. Um, please um, welcome and join us next time. We'll be starting at 4.30 again next week. I'll be taking that session on nuclear physics and then uh, Steve Jones will join us back of the week after with um, revising lasers and photoelectric effect and then the following week it will be stars and radiation thank you for joining us and i hope you've got something from it and we look forward to seeing you again